What does it truly mean to heal? This question, seemingly simple yet deeply complex, lies at the heart of our human experience. Throughout the ages, the pursuit of healing, both physical and psychological, has been a central endeavor in our shared human journey. Yet what does it mean to be truly healed? Is it merely the absence of pain or affliction? Or does it encompass something deeper, something more profound? This question penetrates the very essence of our existence, touching upon our deepest fears and our highest hopes. It compels us to explore the intricate interplay of mind, body, and spirit, and to seek understanding in the wisdom of those who have come before us. To explore this, we must delve into the wisdom of philosophers who have pondered this question throughout history. The journey of healing is a journey into the very heart of the human condition, a voyage of self-discovery, resilience, and transformation. Let us first journey back to ancient Greece, to the time of Aristotle, a period steeped in intellectual pursuit, a time when human understanding of the world was being radically reshaped. Aristotle stood tall among the thinkers of this era, his thoughts and ideas echoing through the corridors of time, influencing countless generations that followed. Aristotle saw us, humans, as social creatures, fundamentally interconnected with the world around us. He believed that our well-being is closely tied to the health of our communities, and that our happiness does not merely spring from individual desires and accomplishments, but from our relationships and contributions to society. Aristotle's concept of eudaimonia, or true happiness, is a cornerstone of his philosophy. For Aristotle, eudaimonia was not a fleeting feeling or a moment of joy. Rather, it represented an enduring state of being, a deep-seated contentment that comes from living a life of virtue and realizing one's full potential. It's about leading a life that is worth living, a life that is fulfilling and meaningful. From this perspective, Aristotle saw psychological healing not merely as the removal of distress or illness. Instead, he saw it as a journey towards eudaimonia, a journey towards a state of flourishing. It's about nurturing our virtues, honing our skills, and contributing to the well-being of our community. Aristotle's vision of healing goes beyond the individual. It expands to encompass the whole of society, emphasizing the crucial role of supportive communities in fostering individual well-being. It's a vision that reminds us that we're not alone in our struggles, that our happiness and healing are interconnected with those around us. Aristotle's concept of eudaimonia offers us a holistic, inclusive, and profound understanding of psychological healing. It invites us to look beyond the self and to recognize our interconnectedness with the world around us. It encourages us to cultivate our virtues, to strive towards realizing our potential, and to contribute to the well-being of our community. For Aristotle, healing was not just about eradicating affliction, but achieving a state of flourishing, a state of eudaimonia, a state of true happiness. A state where we're not merely surviving but thriving. A state where we are not just healed but whole. Traveling forward in time, we encounter the Stoic philosophy. With this pivot, we delve into the teachings of Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius, masters of Stoicism. These ancient philosophers, striding resolutely through the trials of their times, offer us timeless wisdom on resilience and acceptance. Picture this. You are standing in a storm, the wind is howling, the rain is pouring, and you're getting wet. But here's the thing, you can't control the weather. What you can control is your reaction to it. Do you curse the skies, or do you simply accept the rain, adjust your sails and move forward? This, in essence, is the stoic approach to life's challenges. Stoicism teaches us that the path to emotional resilience is through acceptance. It's about understanding the difference between what we can control and what we can't. The weather, the traffic, the behavior of others, these are beyond our control. But our reactions, our emotions, our attitudes, these are within our grasp. Stoicism doesn't ask us to suppress our emotions, but rather to understand them, to reflect on them, and to guide them in a way that aligns with our values and goals. It's about emotional mastery, not denial. It's about harnessing the power of perspective to transform our experiences. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, he is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. Stoicism also champions the pursuit of wisdom. 
It encourages us to seek understanding, to ask questions, to learn from our experiences. It values wisdom not as an abstract concept, but as a practical tool for navigating the complexities of life. It's about cultivating a mindset that views challenges not as obstacles, but as opportunities for growth and learning. In the face of life's challenges, the Stoics taught us that it's not what happens to us, but how we react that truly matters. The essence of Stoicism, then, is a profound form of psychological healing, a roadmap for resilience, acceptance, and the mastery of one's inner world. Now, let's venture into the Enlightenment era with Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant, a towering figure in Western philosophy, invites us to consider the profound significance of individual freedom and rationality in our quest for psychological healing. For Kant, the key to understanding our place in the world, and indeed in our own lives, was through the lens of autonomy and moral agency. Imagine for a moment being the author of your life's story. You're not merely a passive character, but the very scriptwriter, the director, the one who shapes the narrative. This is what Kant's philosophy embodies, a deep sense of self-determination and personal growth. Kant's philosophy underscores the importance of rationality in our decision-making processes. However, this doesn't mean cold, emotionless calculation. Rather, it's about harnessing our capacity for reason to make choices that are aligned with our deepest values and aspirations. It's about being rational actors in our lives, not mere reactors to external circumstances. But how does this relate to psychological healing? Well, in Kant's philosophy, we find a powerful affirmation of the human capacity for self-reflection and self-awareness. By becoming more attuned to our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, we can gain deeper insights into our psychological patterns and cultivate healthier ways of relating to ourselves and the world around us. This is where the healing process truly begins. Moreover, Kant's emphasis on individual freedom reminds us that we are not defined by our past traumas or current struggles. We have the ability to choose how we respond to life's challenges, to rewrite our narratives and shape our destinies. This sense of empowerment is a potent catalyst for psychological healing and personal transformation. In short, Kant's philosophy provides us with a robust framework for understanding and fostering psychological healing. It champions the power of rationality, self-reflection, and individual freedom in our journey towards mental and emotional well-being. Kant reminds us of the crucial role of self-awareness and self-determination in our healing journey. As we move into the 20th century, we encounter the existentialist philosophy, a philosophy that urges us to confront the inevitable uncertainties and anxieties of life, to seek and create our own meaning and to take full responsibility for our existence. Two towering figures stand at the forefront of existentialist thought, French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre and Austrian psychiatrist Viktor Frankl. Let's delve into their transformative ideas and how they contribute to the art of psychological healing. Sartre, a man of profound insight, boldly declared, existence precedes essence. This statement encapsulates the essence of existentialism. It means we first exist, we find ourselves in the world, and then it's up to us, and only us, to define who we are. There's no predefined pattern for life, no absolute moral codes handed down from high above. We are not just tossed into the universe, but we are free, free to shape our own identity, free to determine our own destiny. But with this freedom comes an immense responsibility. We are responsible for our actions, our choices, and ultimately for who we become. This existential freedom, as daunting as it may be, underscores the importance of personal agency in psychological healing. We are not passive victims of our circumstances, but active participants in our recovery. On the other side of the existential spectrum, we meet Viktor Frankl, a man who found meaning in the midst of the unimaginable horrors of the Holocaust. Frankl developed logotherapy, a form of existential analysis centered on the search for meaning. He asserted that even in the most painful and dehumanizing situations, life has potential meaning. This meaning, he believed, is a potent force for psychological resilience. It helps us to endure suffering, to embrace life's challenges, and to persevere in the face of adversity. Sartre and Frankl present us with a profound existential challenge. They compel us to confront our freedom, to bear our responsibility, and to actively seek our own meaning. 
Sartre and Frankel challenge us to find our own meaning and purpose as a key to resilience and well-being. In this existential quest, we discover the true art of psychological healing. Finally, we arrive at the present, where the field of positive psychology has emerged. This modern approach to healing and wellness has opened a new chapter in our understanding of the human psyche, emphasizing not just the absence of illness, but the presence of wellness. Philosophers of old would find familiar echoes in the focus on virtues, strengths, and the cultivation of positive emotions. But there's a distinct flavor of the contemporary here too. Practices such as gratitude and mindfulness have found their place in the modern lexicon of healing, offering tools for individuals to nurture their psychological well-being in their everyday lives. Martin Seligman and Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, pioneers of this field, have shown a light on the science of happiness and human flourishing, breaking new ground in our quest for understanding and wellness. In our quest for healing, we learn that it's not just about overcoming adversity, but nurturing our psychological well-being and enhancing our resilience. So, what have we learned about the art of healing? From the ancient wisdom of Aristotle, we've gleaned that true healing is not just the absence of affliction, but the flourishing of the individual thriving within a supportive community. This concept of eudaimonia, or true happiness, underscores the importance of cultivating virtue and realizing one's full potential. We've journeyed through the Stoic teachings of Epictetus, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius, reminding us that it's not what happens to us, but how we react to it that determines our well-being. Stoicism teaches us the value of acceptance, resilience, and the quest for wisdom in navigating the tumultuous seas of life. We've pondered Immanuel Kant's Enlightenment-era philosophy, illuminating the significance of autonomy, moral agency, and individual freedom. The emphasis on self-reflection and self-awareness in Kant's work underscores the role of personal growth in the process of healing. We've explored the existentialist philosophies of Jean-Paul Sartre and Viktor Frankl, staring into the existential angst inherent in the human condition. Their teachings highlight the freedom and responsibility we each carry in shaping our identities and destinies, and the role of meaning and purpose in fostering psychological resilience. We've delved into the modern realm of positive psychology, where scholars like Martin Seligman and Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi have mapped out the science of happiness and human flourishing. This field of study emphasizes our strengths, virtues, and the cultivation of positive emotions as crucial elements in nurturing psychological well-being and resilience. In the grand scheme of things, the art of healing is a complex tapestry woven from the threads of philosophy, psychology, and personal experience. It's a journey of introspection, growth, and resilience, a dance of the mind, body, and spirit in the pursuit of well-being. And so we come to understand that the pursuit of healing is a journey, one that involves the interplay of mind, body, and spirit, and is deeply rooted in the wisdom of philosophers past and present.